This is a tutorial on how I cut windows into Starship holes. So we can see that I've already created a hole here, that this is what we're gonna cut our window into. And then I've created a window cutter object here, and this is the size and shape of the window that I wanna end up with. Now it is ever so slightly larger than the final window will be, but the reasons for that will become apparent. Now the first thing to bear in mind when doing something like this is to always model at real world scale, one to one. There's no real reason not to, and if you're modeling at a real world scale, it makes it a lot easier to judge details, window sizes, deck layouts, that kind of thing. So with that in mind, it's always worth having a human sized block that you can refer to. So this is 1.8 meters tall by 0.5 by 0.5 meters. And it just gives you a better visual reference for how things are sizing up. So in this case, we can see here, I've got a window and that looks like it's about a sensible size <clears throat> for a Starship window. So let's hide the person again. So we're gonna cut this into our hole. So we're gonna select our hole, go into edit mode. Now I've deliberately made um, this quite dense geometry wise, just so I can show some of the cleanup as we go forward. So whilst we're in edit mode, I'm gonna hold down control and select my cutter object. And then go to our front projection like that. So now we're seeing exactly where the window will be cut. We're in 2D mode. Now it's worth zooming in slightly because Blender seems to have some sort of internal resolution that it works to. And if you're zoomed out really far and then do a knife project, um, you can get some inaccuracy in the cut. So it's better to be zoomed in. And then we're gonna to go to mesh, knife project, and that projects our window cutter into the hole. Now, if I come out of edit mode and just select the hole, we'll go back in and we can see the shape we've been cut is already selected. I'm going to change to vertex mode. Now, luckily, these where this geometry is perfectly lines up with where our windows cut. So we don't have to do any cleanup there. If we go to the bottom, it doesn't line up. What we've got here is the existing edge is going between our new geometry. So we need to clean that up. So we're just going to move these vertexes. So I'm going to select that one, then select that one, press M and we're gonna merge at last, and that just takes everything and merges it to the last selected vertex. I'm gonna do the same this side, merge at last. Now, a lot of times people might be tempted to just select these faces and delete them or whatever, but that could potentially introduce shading errors later. So we need to create some support geometry first. So we're gonna change back to face mode. I'm gonna select all the um, faces in the window. And I'm gonna do an inset by pressing I, and I'm gonna inset by 0.05, so five centimeters. Now we can see here, because we've done that, uh, we've got some geometry errors again, so we need to clean those up. <clears throat> so because this is all planar, as in it is all a completely flat surface, I'm just gonna delete these. So I'm gonna select that edge, that edge, that edge, that edge, right click, dissolve edges. That's fine. Now I'll select all our window internal faces. Now we're gonna want this because this is gonna be our glass. So I'm gonna right click, separate selection, and that's gone off and it is its own object now. So if I come out of edit mode, we can see I've got one object that's the hull and then one object that's the window. And we can see that's separate there. I'm just gonna hide the window for the time being. Now the way I do this is with a modifier to get to get our window frame, as opposed to just selecting these edges and then extruding in to get the thickness, um, because that is destructive. So once we've done that, that's set in stone, I can't change it later. So I'm gonna undo that. So if we go to our modifiers panel, I'm gonna add a modifier, solidify. Now this applies to the whole hull. So we'll just up the thickness. You can see there we're getting some window frame thickness. If I go around the other side, we can see it's solidified the whole thing. We don't want that. So I'm gonna tick this only rim. So that only gives me the rim there. And the benefit of doing this way is if we have it there, we can adjust it later. So now the solidifies on, we need to sort out this edge because obviously this is shading weird. <clears throat> so if I go to wireframe mode like that. Now we're gonna add a bevel modifier. 
and we're going to need to make that smaller. There we go. And we'll make it two segments. And we can see there, yeah, 0 0.02 looks about right. And that just gives us a nice round edge going into that window frame there. If I go back here, you can see that's looking good. Now, I don't know if <clears throat> YouTube compression might kill this, but we can see that there's a little bit of shading error around the edge here. We can see, see this line. And the way to fix that is with a weighted normal modifier. So we're going to go add modifier, weighted normal. And you always want weighted normal to be last in the stack, so at the bottom. And it's saying enable auto smooth in object data properties. So we're going to come to object data properties under normals. And when I tick this, you'll notice this shading will clean up slightly. There we go. So that's now shading. I use a weighted normal modifier on basically everything. Um, it, it's always useful to have to clean up the shading. Um, so yeah, just use it on, on everything. Okay, so that's the window frame cut. So now if we bring the glass back in, we can see the glass is there, but we don't want it to sit there. Now we could obviously sit here and manually position that. But that's a pain, especially if you're doing a whole starship and you're cutting hundreds and hundreds of windows. So let's go to another one. Before we go any further, let's cut another window. So I'm going to cut one here. I'm going to do the same again. Front, zoom in, mesh, knife project. Go in there. Do we have to do any cleanup here? Oh, yes. So we have to zoom in here. We can see this is just on the edge. There's the, the geometry that we want to keep. So we're going to move these vertexes here. We're going to select this one last because that's where we want to move everything to. M at last. There we go. Same down here. M at last. Same here. M at last. Same process here. Move everything to the geometry that's come from the curve. Now you might argue that you want more segments on your window here to remove the segmentation for higher detail. Just bear in mind that the more segments you use, the more cleanup you've got to do. And it's unlikely that you're going to get this close to a 3D model anyway, unless you're going mad on texture detail. So there we go, that's tidied all those up. So same as before, select the internal faces. Inset, 0 0.05. Always want to use the same value. So if you're going to be doing a big ship, make a note of the value that you've used, in this case 0 0.05. And then we're just going to clean these up. I'm just using a shortcut that I have, but I'm still doing still doing merge at last. If it's a, something that you're using a hell of a lot like this, if you're doing a lot of windows and you're going to be doing a lot of cleanup, if you select your two, press M, and then at last you can right click and go, um, you can add it to your quick favorites. I've already got it on mine, so it's asking to remove. But if I pick something else like this, add to quick favorites. And then quick favorites is something you can bind to any hotkey you like. In my case, I've got it on mouse button four. So I select those, press mouse four, and I've got it there, merge at last straight away. Now let's, because this is all planner, we can get rid of some of this that we don't need. There we go, dissolve edges. That looks fine. So we're going to select these internal faces again. Right click, separate selection, and that's off as its own object. Now you will notice that we've separated it, but it inherits the modifiers of the object that it came from. So this hole has got modifiers on it, a solidify, a bevel, and a weighted normal. We've separated out what will be our window glass, and that's inherited those, so we need to remove those now. It will also take uh, things like vertex groups with it and materials, but we don't need to worry about that for now. So now we can see we've got our window frames, two window frames, and we've got two windows that are separate objects, and we'll keep them like that for a second. So for our first one, again, I'm going to add a solidify modifier. And that's okay. I'm going to right click shade flat so that it doesn't try and do any of that weird shading we can see if it's shade smooth we don't really want to have to bevel the edges of this to tidy up the shading because for window glass that's overkill in my opinion so we'll just go shade flat now using this offset we can move the position of the window so we can first choose our window thickness 0 0.01 meters is fine and then by changing this offset so if i go minus 10 we'll see it moves back slightly so minus 20, 
there we go. So that seems like a reasonable place to have our glass. And we can control that just with this offset. Now we've got this one, so we could do the same here, add modifier, blah, blah, blah. We don't want to do that, make life easier. So we'll just select this one, shift select the other one, and control J, join. And that just makes them part of the same object. And then we'll just do shade flat again. That will tidy up the shading. And then we can leave them like that. And again, the benefit of that is we can do a whole starship. And then if we decide we're not quite happy with the window position, we can just play with that and move the windows around. So in this case, minus 20, that's fine. And once you've got all the windows on your ship done, you can control their positioning just with that offset. And now if we move to shaded mode, cycles, there we go. So I've prepared a window material, black glass, and there we go. We can see our windows now are inset. We've got nice shading around the edge of the frames here because we've got our bevel modifier on the hull and our solidifier is giving the thickness to the hull. And again, with that, we can adjust that, make them thicker, not as thick. We can still play with everything because it's all non-destructive. Now we can see where we've positioned this room. It is intersecting the windows slightly there, so we just need to move it up. So if I go back here, we'll just take it up. And there we go, that seems like a, a sensible place. And obviously the windows are opaque at the moment, so we're gonna increase our transmission to one. And then my window color is black, which is allowing no light to pass through, so we'll just start backing that off. There we go. And with the rooms behind, you don't need to be super high detailed. Literally boxes with a texture on them are fine most of the time, unless you're getting really close to the ship. That tends to hold up well enough. Now it's worth bearing in mind that because we've used a solidify modifier here, that is applying to the whole hull, not just these window frames. So we've got it on the edges here. So you do have to think about where you're hiding these edges. Uh, or <clears throat> when you're finished, you can apply the modifier by going up there, apply. That will freeze the geometry in, and then you can go in and delete that geometry later. Alternatively, you can target um, the solidify modifier with a vertex group specifically. So you could add these edges, or these vertexes more specifically, to a vertex group and then do it to those. I've found that the behavior of the solidify modifier with vertex groups can be a little bit unpredictable and you can end up with overlapping geometry. Um, I don't know if they've fixed that or not in the latest versions of Blender, um, but I've, I just steer clear of it and so I just apply it to the whole hull. And then if you need to do cleanup later manually, that's just part of what has to be done. So I hope that helps some people cut windows into their starships. Happy modeling.